Good morning, church. Our prayer warriors are on their knees praying to make sure the changeable ones are changed. Prophecy is a guide to life. This is the word of God. Happy New Year. These prophecies were released on 28 December 2019, but made available on 5th January 2020. I will read just a few, and the rest, you will find them on our official social media accounts. Prophecy for 2020, Prophet T.B. Joshua. Prophecy for the world. Your name is called Jesus. agitation from a section that wants to leave that will become an issue also pray for the queen and the duke of edinburgh against going in and out of the hospital pray for god to give them revival pray for unity and understanding among the royal family because of what i am seeing brexit needs more time to stand on its feet with cooperation of the EU leaders. If not, there will be economic repercussions and the cost of things will become unbearable. With time and preparation, all will be well. Note, part two will be released after thorough confirmation from God. This is just part one. Well, well, yeah. you know, Harry and Meghan have made the shock announcement, as you've heard in the news, that they're stepping down as senior members of the royal family. And former palace secretary Dickie Arbiter joins us now from London. A very good morning oh. or evening to you, Dickie. Firstly, good morning, Ali. Good evening from London. Firstly, your immediate reaction to this news. My immediate reaction was surprise and absolute disappointment. Mm. I thought after six weeks in Canada, uh, where they were able to do their own thing without any interference from anybody, to get away from all the trials and tribulations of last year surrounding the birth of Archie, the taking planes to the south of France and to uh, Ibiza and the bad press and the, the sort of rant that Harry had in South Africa, that they would have put all that behind them, come back to the UK as they did, do their first First engagement at Canada House, we sort of saw the lie of the land and get on with 2020. Unfortunately, they've decided otherwise they are stepping back. They're not getting out of the royal family, but they are stepping back from frontline duties. And that's a great disappointment. Dickie, it's not just a disappointment. It's almost, I say almost, unprecedented that he would be stepping so far away from the royal family. What would be going on behind those mm. closed doors this evening in London time? Well, you're absolutely right, Carl. It is unprecedented. Discounting that Prince Andrew having to step away uh, after his uh, car crash interview over the Jeff Jeffrey Epstein affair and uh, Edward VIII abdicating in 1936 because he wasn't allowed to marry the woman he loved and remain, to remain king. This has never happened before. And uh, I think behind closed doors, there'd be an element of disappointment because Harry was an absolute bonus uh, to the royal family. He had a tremendous attitude to his work. He brought a lot of joy to to a lot of people, uh, does this mean that they're going to have one foot in, say, for example, Canada, another foot in the UK? How are they going to marry up the two? How are they going to do their engagements? How are they going to uh, service their patronages? And how are they going to do the job for which the Queen gave them, President and Vice President of the Commonwealth Youth Trust? How are they going to fulfil that? The logistics have still got, to, still got to be worked out. And the other additive to that is the whole question of security. They're still mm. going to have security. Who's going to pay for that? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? Because they're talking about moving towards becoming financially independent. And I just think even in the language there, they're not saying that they're going to be. Mm. Um, who does pay? Is that still the British taxpayer that has to pay for their security? 
Well, it's, it's where is the security found? Is it found as it is at the moment with personal protection officers from Scotland Yard or are the Canadians going to be brought on board? And if the Canadians are brought on board, who's going to pay for that? Because at the moment, the taxpayer in the UK is paying for it. Um, which they are doing for not just the royal family, but senior members of government. Um, who's going to pay for that? Is it going to change in Canada? They're not going to get away from the media. If they really think that going to Canada means they're going to get away from the media, they, they're, they're in cuckoo land because they're not going to get away from but the media. But hang on, they just they had six weeks to... over there and they were basically left alone. Yeah, but this is different now, surely. I mean, they're, 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 going to ha well, they're not going to be able to move without a camera. They're not going to be able to go to the loo without a, to without a camera on them. Yeah, they, they, they were left alone where they were on Vancouver Island, but they allegedly going over to set up base in Canada to work over there. They're going to work there, they're going to work in the United Kingdom, how they're going to marry the two up. And then you've got the whole question of how they're getting from Canada to the UK, how they're getting from the UK to Canada, that's flying, that's a carbon footprint. So, you know, we've got the whole business of climate change, we've got the whole business of, of uh, carbon footprints. It's a bit of a logistical nightmare they put themselves in. Dickie, Dickie didn't Ed, Edward was the last one, wasn't he? Didn't he fall in love with, with an American style? Well, Simpson, yeah, an yeah. American. Uh, so, so that's kind of the, the last time this happened in a way. But but isn't this just a giant up yours from Harry and Meghan to the royal family and to the Queen? Sorry, say, I missed exactly. that call. Thank you, <laughs> no, he's, they're basically <laughs> shunning the Queen and the royal family. They're, they're, they're leaving the family. They know exactly mm. what they're doing um, and, and, and they know the ramifications of it. Which is quite a disappointment to the royal family. They, they know exactly what they're doing and they're stepping out of frontline duty, which means they're not going to be around. Are they going to be around for Trooping the Colour? Are they going to be around for Remembrance Day? These are big national events in the United Kingdom. Are they going to come back specifically for that? They're not going to be here for the major events. They're not going to be, they say they're going to be supporting the Queen, the Prince of Wales, the Duke of Cambridge, but... How is this going to happen? In, in, in what form is this going to take? Uh, there are a lot of questions to be asked and they've got a lot of answers Dickie, to come up with. Dickie, there has been a statement just released mm. from Buckingham Palace. Uh, I'll read it because your eyesight's terrible. <laughs> Discussions with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are at an early stage. We understand their desire to take a different approach, but these are complicated issues that will take time to work through. Well, that is an absolute, let's not mince any words here, a breakdown inside the royal family. Uh, I suppose it is a breakdown in the royal family. There's some, something's gone wrong. Um, you know, the rest of the royals managed to cope pretty well. Uh, the Queen gets on with it. You, uh Prince of Wales, mm. Duchess of Cornwall, Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, Princess Royal, they all get on with their work. Something has broken down in terms of Harry and Meghan in the way they look upon the royal family. Who has made the decision? Has Harry made the decision? Has Meghan made the decision? Has it been a joint decision? Has Meghan found it difficult to embrace the royal family, embrace the, royal, the, the way of life in the UK? They've got to answer those questions because people are going to want to know. Okay, well look, um, we're going to have much more reaction to this. Dickie Arbiter, it's always it's lovely to see you. Uh, it's a wonderful tie. You're bringing colour to an otherwise Thanks, very Carl. dismal day. Um, thank you so much for that, mate. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, as thank I said you. before...